former co-workers of disbarred attorney Alec Murdoch took the stand against him today, talking about financial crimes he's accused of committing at the firm. Murdoch is on trial, accused of killing his wife Maggie and their son Paul in June of 2021. The prosecution believes Alec was under pressure from a mountain of debt and financial trouble, and they are using this testimony to help establish a motive for murder. Our team coverage continuing right now outside of the Colleton County Courthouse with Raphael James, Blair Sable, and Emily Zuhowski. Raphael, they worked with him for years. What was their tone today in court? Well, the CFO of the law firm where she used to work, Jenny Seconder, uh, she said it was pure betrayal. She said they would have the fees come into one pot, come into the company. All the lawyers' fees were to come into that one pot and all of their salaries were paid from it. But she says when she found out that Alec Murdoch had been diverting almost $3 million worth of firms into a personal account, she took it personally, she says. This afternoon, another member of that law firm took the stand. Lead prosecutor Creighton Waters took a different route when questioning this former colleague and friend, though, Ronnie Crosby. Blair Sable joins us now with highlights from that specific line of questioning. Blair? Well, Roth lead prosecutor Creighton Waters asked Ronnie Crosby about Alec Murdoch's cell phone usage, and Crosby describes it as constant. This is one of the many interesting ways the state is now tying all of this evidence that the jury has heard to these alleged financial crimes that Murdoch is accused of. The judge ruling recently that they could be included in this murder trial. Now, as a reminder, we heard that Murdoch's phone had no activity for about an hour during the time window that Maggie and Paul's phones go silent. Crosby testified about the financial crimes, but he also was at Moselle shortly after the crimes and heard Murdoch's recollection of that night firsthand. He identifies his friend, Alec Murdoch, his voice in the video we saw before that places him at the crime scene just three minutes before Paul and Maggie never respond to any messages ever again. We also heard again from Jeannie Seconder earlier, the current CFO of Parker Law Group. Here's what she had to say when asked about murder. I think Alec um, was successful more off, not from his work ethic, but from his ability to establish relationships and to, to manipulate people into settlements and clients into liking him. Um, so he did it through the article, basically. Yeah, strong words from second juror. She also went through the receipts and found that Murdoch had been stealing from clients and the firm for a decade. The defense reiterating, though, during cross-examination that he has not been convicted of any of the 99 charges he is facing, uh, not associated with the murders, of course. Uh, and during those in-camera hearings that were happening uh, both yesterday and late last week, uh, we also heard from Jan Malinowski, the current CEO of Palmetto State Bank, and Chris Wilson, a good friend of Murdoch's, who testified that Murdoch swindled him out of hundreds of thousands of dollars in cash. We could be hearing from them shortly. Roth? All right, Blair, thank you. And let's stay on the topic of Jeannie Seconder's testimony for just a moment. She was colorful in court today, but not nearly as spicy as she was a year ago. Her tone was markedly different. Emily Zuhowski is standing by now uh, with a look at how that went over in the courtroom. Emily? During Seconder's second time testifying, she had a much different demeanor from last time. This time, a lot more agreeable and a lot less almost combative in front of the jury. The CFO of Parker Law Group this time reflecting on how Murdoch's alleged financial crimes impacted her. Seconder talking about how she knew Murdoch since she was 16 years old. So for about 40 years, she worked for him with him closely for over 20 years. But she says she doesn't think she ever really knew him. She also says she doesn't think anybody actually knows him. You can hear and see how Murdoch's betrayal of her trust impacted her in this clip from cross-examination earlier today with defense attorney Jim Griffin. It looks like, according to um, your testimony, that this misconduct has been going on since as early as 2011. Unfortunately, when we found that out. Right. So some 
10 years before the murders of Maggie and Paul, correct? That's correct. He managed to fool a lot of people, myself included. I understand. And I understand you have a right to be very hurt and angry about that. And, and are you hurt and angry about that? Oh, yes. I take it very personally. It haunts me that I let this or that this happened. Second juror's testimony lasted about four hours. Again, this was her second time taking the stand. Again, the first time that the jury got to hear her. And again, lots more detail in front of them this time. Reporting live in Calton County, Emily Zuhowski, Live 5 News. Roth. And this trial started with 12 jurors and six alternates. We're going to continue with 12 jurors and five alternates. One of them was dismissed this morning uh, because they had to go to the emergency room. At this time, we're not sure of the nature of that emergency, but the judge said we're not going to delay this trial. That juror was dismissed. In Colleton County, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. All right, Raphael, a lot happening in court today. Now, we will continue to be inside of the courtroom throughout this trial, bringing you the latest on air and online with our streaming service. Our Live 5 team coverage of the murder trial will continue at 6 o'clock this evening.